Guys, if you follow the channel, you've no doubt seen my Mojave on 8S. I put the full Creighton 8S system right into this. I'll put a link in the description for you guys to check that video out if you missed it. Now, with great power comes great driveline stress. And the diffs are going to take a beating every time it's on 8S because the power is instant. I mean, the stock power line, the stock powertrain, the motor and all is really, really good in this truck, but the 8S is just a little bit more. So I have got Vitavon diff cases. So these will hold that pinion gear and that ring gear together. There's zero flex in this. As with the plastic, it can kind of flex a little bit and over time it'll fatigue and start flexing more and then you start having gear problems. Pinion gear will start skipping on that ring gear and all that. So let's go ahead and get these put into the Mojave and take it for a test drive. Take a look. Let's look at this thing up close. It's not heavy, so it doesn't add very much weight at all to the truck. Is it heavier than the plastic? Of course, but it's actually pretty nice. You see all that metal right there? That'll keep that pinion gear set on the ring gear perfectly. No flex, you know, so should have better ring and pinion life and better power handling capability. And this is it right here full Creighton system with the 20 tooth pinion gear. I'm thinking about swapping this motor out already. Even though it does absolutely great, I'm thinking something along the 1650 line. That would wake this thing up again. So, I've got to tear into the entire back. I've got to take all that stuff off. That is going to be quite the job. Same with the front. Also, quite the job. I'm going to try to show you guys as simply as possible how to do this but uh well it's gonna be quite the job now there is one issue i have been having with this truck and that deals with the back that piece right there i guess i need to get a new one ordered or come up with some kind of a skid to come all the way up because that right there kind of is like a giant shovel <laughs> so anyway i'm going to get to work and hopefully I can show you guys some of the uh, tech of getting into these diffs and get things take up apart. Front wheels, tires and bumper assembly off. Top arm pins out. Bolts down here out. Bolts underneath out. And at that point the front end is workable. Loosen these screws right here, here and over here. And notice, you should be able to pull that out off of the chassis. I had to use two hands, but it came out pretty darn easily. And there's your assembly right there. Ring gear, all that. Now I can get rid of this and concentrate on this. New piece next to the old piece. Yeah, I got a little dirt on that. But, uh... Pretty much it's just simply unbolt and bolt right on. It should go right in these two bolts right here, shock towers. You may be able to get by without even taking the shocks off. And then just take those bolts out right there and just swap it all right onto this piece right here. Before I dig into this, I may already be changing some bearings. <laughs> With the front and rear hinge pin holders off, sway bar holder off, and these bolts out right here, pretty much it all just comes right apart. And now we can get to the gears. Like most any new vehicle out there, uh, you take those four screws out, and now you can get to the diff. I'll take that right out as well. Let's see if I can get this out one handed. Uh, it should come. Let's see here. Come on. Come on. It is in there good and tight. That's actually a good thing. There we go. So that is the front diff. Looks good, actually. They greased it nice. See that shim on the back side of the ring gear? Make sure you don't lose that. 
Remove the input cup by taking out that screw right there. There's your pinion gear right there. And as you can see, if I can show you, that input bearing absolutely has some wear to it. The bearing there looks nice and beefy, like a nice big, uh, a nice big bearing right there. I have to pop that out. But hopefully, I have one of those bearings in stock so I can replace that on the new housing. Those right there are your stock bearings. That's a really nice bearing. I don't have one of those in stock, but I am going to measure that out and get some of those in stock just in case. There's a stock input bearing right there. Basically like a 5x11x4. By by this is the direct replacement. And then you have this 5x13x4. By by That's what actually goes into here. So yeah, Vitavon has bumped that up and evidently Considering I've only ran this truck, you know, five or six times, that's a needed, needed upgrade. Back into place, and that larger input bearing, absolutely a must-have piece. Wow, nice job, Vitavon. I like that. The diff is put in place. Oh, and by the way, if you wanted to open the diff up and change your uh, fluid out, now's a great opportunity to do it. I'm just leaving mine the way it is, factory and it looks beautiful went in nice and snug perfect nice nice job this is assembled and ready to go back into the front end over there now yes i am going to add a little bit of grease to it wow beautiful piece shock tower bolted back on sway bar back in place with the hinge pin holders in place a little grease it is ready to go back into the chassis. The rest of the process is sliding this back into the chassis. You've got to align the input dog bone up to that, and all this should slide right up into there. Minus the front bumper piece, it is all together. Everything is right there. This piece right here, I found it a lot easier to just take this whole piece loose and mount this onto here, and then put the bulkhead back on. So that was just the easier way for me to do it. Um, especially dealing with the drive shaft and all that. Everything lines up beautifully. So I'll get the front bumper on. And then we're going to get to the rear, which looks to be a lot simpler. Should not be a problem at all. I showed you guys this earlier right here. While I have this off, I'm probably going to hit this with a heat gun. And just see if I can get that bent back down. But I've got to order a new rear piece. So I even try to wash her underneath that one. Nothing just, nothing seems to hold that down. I don't know what I caught it on. You never know. Could have been one of those jumps. I mean, I don't like to jump my stuff, you know. Take it easy. With these bolts out and those two bolts back there. Let's see if I can do this. It's coming right on off. <laughs> All right. And then you got those two bolts that hold that on. And... There you go. Now we get to dig into this. Removing the bumper gives a lot of room instantly right to get to the back side. With the exception of getting those off of the front side right there, it's the same procedure and you end up with the exact same diff case. So it'll be the exact same procedure to swap all this stuff in. And that was on the table because, well, I need to clean it up. And I'll get that cleaned up and reassembled. Got the back end together. Took a little more time than I thought with all the parts and pieces to <laughs> make this thing go. So now it's time to get it on the chassis and make sure you haven't lost your little spacers and stuff like that because you're going to need them. And it is finally ready for some wheels and tires. Wow, they are in, look good. Oh yeah, I'm actually glad I got into them because especially that front bearing, that would have caused bigger issues had I not messed with it. Stock diff housings actually have a nice little metal insert into the diff to hold the pinion in place, but it would have been nicer to just have the larger pinion bearing, the larger outer pinion bearing to start with.
while that rear diff was apart, I didn't mention this to you guys. I put million weight in that rear axle. <laughs> I do like hitting this jump right here. Those Vitavon cases are awesome. They fit well. They hold the pinion gear right to it. They also help disperse the heat into the chassis. I mean, they're bolted directly to the chassis, so all of that kind of becomes a heat sink. It absolutely does. That heat transfers out of that pinion gear because believe it or not, the pinion gear does get hot. You may grease it up all you want. There's still friction at the ring gear and pinion gear. Still friction there. So these pieces with the 8S system and what I have future plans for this truck should help keep things alive, secure, and allow me to have a fun time driving it. Guys, check that description for links for the Vitavon cases and other Vitavon products. There's, he's got a lot of stuff out there. I'll put links in there for that. Also affiliate links for A-Main, Amazon, and eBay. If you have something in your cart, come back to any one of my videos, click on the link that I have in the description, go to that site and check out. Every little bit helps. So guys, hopefully you like the video. Hopefully you like these Vitavon parts and thank you all for watching. If you guys like what you see, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. If you really, really like what you see, consider clicking on that join button down below. With that, you can actually become a channel member. Members get early viewing of many of the videos and, you know, a little bit more personalized. Guys, thank you all for watching.